authentication and we are on the sixth tutorial of this chapter till now we have completed the login page where we attached a role called user to the authenticated user please refer l4 for the details of the i principle of the i principle that we created there and we attached the role of user to the authenticated user for details please refer this chapter where we completed the login process today we shall add a page then we shall add protection to it so that only the authenticated users and that too with the role of user only those users can view its contents so this is the point of today's lecture this diagram describes the objective of this tutorial again i am explaining the objective of the tutorial we will add an index razor page today then we shall mark it protected so that only logged in users can access it and amongst the logged in users only the users who have a role user and in addition we shall also add a role admin so that a user a logged in user in the role of a user and or in the role of a admin he should be able to access its contents so come to the solution explorer find the folder called pages and add a razor page called index this will be our protected page this is the razor page index double click the file index.cshtml.cs file and open it so that we can apply the authorize attribute to this class this is the backing class the index model that opens apply the authorize attribute to the entire class so that access to the page can be restricted to authenticated users only but if there is a requirement where we want to restrict only certain actions on this page say for example we want that only authenticated users should be able to click say a delete link then instead of the whole class we should mark only that specific method as authorize there is a method we want to restrict to that we will apply the authorize attribute to that particular method only but in this case we are going to restrict the entire page so we have applied the authorize attribute to the entire page we have also we have also used the roles property to limit the access to two roles user or admin multiple roles are specified as a comma separated list this is a user one role comma admin so either a person of the user role or of admin role will be able to access this page now run the project after applying that role make no other change run the project to open the index home page of your project the index page that we have opened just now we observe that we are thrown to the login page we are thrown we try to open the index page but we are thrown to the login page also notice that the url in the address bar this address bar url has a return url parameter and its value is set equal to the index home page this is a slash so this basically represents the index home page this return url is used by the on post method when the user clicks this submit button and he he executes the on post method on the backing class then this return url is used by the on post method to redirect the user to the index page after he is authenticated so this return url plays the role of taking the user back to the original page that he wanted to actually visit first let us see why we have been thrown to this login page let us try to understand the whole flow that has actually taken place the first reason is that we try to access the index page that has an authorize attribute and we are not yet authenticated this is the first reason why we were thrown to the login page secondly as you have seen in the lecture l1 in the first lecture or i think in the second lecture we specified the login path this was the add cookie add cookie method we called there we specified the login path equal to the login page 
So what happens is that when a user is not authenticated and he is supposed to be taken to the login page then this is the path that is picked by ASP.NET Core and it takes the user to this particular page. So this is the point that is important here and we have already configured this in our first or I think second lecture. Okay, so now we know why we are on the login page. So now enter the correct user ID and password and click the submit button. We are authenticated by the backing class of the login page, the code for which we discussed in the lecture L4. And after that we have been redirected to the home page that we intended to show, intended to see. The index page now is open and things have worked fine. Now let's review the whole login process. Let us see how the whole process of login and how the whole process of this movement to the back to the index page, how that has occurred. Let us take a, a new look at that once again. So for that, let us open the login backing class, the login.cshtml.cs, the backing class. In this class, in the fourth lecture, we wrote the login process. So let us double click and open this file. This is the file that opens and this we already completed. So now let us see those particular parts that played a role here. First of all, the on post async method was called when the submit button was clicked. Notice that the on post method, it receives a return URL as a parameter. And then this parameter is ultimately used for redirection. Then this is the point where we set the role as user. And this last line, this caused the whole redirection, local redirect. So these are the three things that we added. This caused the redirection. This is where we added the role as user. And this is what brought us the return URL the on post method it received the return URL and that is why after authentication the user was taken back to the page that he originally intended to see. So this is where uh, we have applied the role the authorized role and this role user it matched the role that we set in the backing class and this allowed us to see the page. So this is the whole process that has occurred here. Now close the project to change the role on the index page. So come back to your index model class and here make a small change, change the role to user x. Run again and try to log in. When you run the run again you will be thrown back to the login page. Try to log in with the correct credentials once again and click this submit. We will observe that despite repeated attempts, we are unable to open the index page. We expected this because the role was changed there. But let us see the whole process uh, formally also. Firstly, this was the role that was assigned to us when the submit was clicked. This time when we clicked, we were assigned the role user because this is the backing class where this is the role we get. So we first got this role. Then we tried to access the index model and found the role as user x and therefore there was a rejection. But there is a third point also that needs importance here. The when you uh, came with the role user and the expected role was user x. At that point you were already authenticated. But now because this this you did not have this role, that was a case of access denied. So for that, the access denied path, it must be set in the startup.cs file. This access denied path we have set equal to the same login page. So that is why when this user x is not found, an access denied case occurs and you are thrown back to the login page even though you have entered the correct login ID and password. So this is how the whole story is working. 
you can check the whole project obtain the source code and this is the whole process that works you may have to go through it a bit again and again to understand it but this is the complete project in the next tutorial I'll be completing the uh, this uh, index razor page this I'll be completing so we'll do the wrapping up part in the next lecture probably thank you